So today we're going to be talking about scales and single note picking techniques. And today we'll be talking mostly about the pentatonic scale, which is the most commonly used scale in most guitar-based music. And that's going to be the subject of today's discussion. But I'm also going to show you another scale today, which we will use as mainly as a practice tool. So the first scale I'm going to show you is the chromatic scale, which is all 12 notes in Western music. And the reason I'm going to show you this scale first is because it's very good one to use when practicing the fretting hand technique on proper scale work. And so to play this scale, you'll just hit the open note of each string and then go up each fret all the way to the fourth fret. And you'll notice each fret is about a finger's width apart, which means you should dedicate one finger to each fret on the guitar, which is exactly how you should be doing it when performing scales. So that way, everything is perfectly economic. So to play the chromatic scale, we'll start with the open E note, then place your first finger on the first fret, your second finger on the second fret, third finger on the third fret, and fourth finger on the fourth fret. Then we'll move on to the next string, which is the A string here. The same process, open, first, second, third, fourth. And then you'll just continue the same process all the way down the strings. And then once you've reached the bottom like so, you can start coming back down the strings in reverse order. So just lift off your pinky finger, then your middle, your ring finger, middle finger, and first finger to the open. And just practice that, making sure to fret each fret on each string. And just go slowly. And be sure to use your pinky finger. Because the uh, pinky finger is not used to doing these kinds of things. And you may not feel comfortable doing it at first. But it is a very important thing to get used to, so that you can use the pinky finger when playing scales later down the line. You don't want to just cheat and just slide up your ring finger. Be sure to have each finger dedicated to a fret. Because it'll make things a lot better down the line. Okay, now let's talk about how we're going to pick the notes. So if you take that chromatic scale, uh, we'll start out first by just going down on each note. So if you remember our chromatic scale, it's just going up each fret. So we're just going down on each plug, like this. And that's a good way to start, just so that you have the scale down. However, eventually you'll want to move toward alternating picking, which means going down and up on the string like this. And you can practice that just with an open note before you start throwing in any fretting, where you just go down, then up. And the reason it's good to have this technique is that it essentially allows you to double the speed at which you're picking and makes it so your hand isn't nearly as tired by having to go down the entire time. So if we do the scale again, this time, every time you go down, the next note will be picked up. And 
and you'll want to focus on making sure that you do it alternating perfectly so that if you go down the next note must be picked up and if you pick up the next note must go down so it's not just haphazard and you're just throwing in down and up strokes willy-nilly you want to make sure that you're being very precise and accurate and that it alternates perfectly So just practice that with the chromatic scale, and then you can apply it towards the pentatonic scale that I'm going to show you as well. Okay, so now we're going to get it into the pentatonic scale. And this scale is present in a lot of Western music, and especially in guitar-based music. And it is very useful to know, and it is a very good first scale to learn because it only contains five notes in the whole sequence. And the important thing to know is the scale is movable. So you can take the same basic shape or pattern and move it up and down the neck to change keys. So to just play it in the open position here, it'll look like this. Open E. Then your ring finger on the third fret of the E. Open A note. The middle finger at the second fret of the A. Open D, 2nd fret of the D, open G, 2nd fret of the G, open B, 2nd fret, or 3rd fret of the B, open E, and 3rd fret. So just to recap, open 3, open Two, open, two, open, two, open, three, open, three. And then like I said, you can move this up and down the neck. So go ahead and practice that in as many positions as you want. So if we were to do the same thing at the third fret here, it's the same basic pattern. So when we were going from open to three, we're moving up three frets. So if we were to start at the third fret, we'll move up three frets, which means your pinky will be at the sixth fret here, which is three frets above here. Then take your index and just move it along the third fret. To the next note, we'll move two frets up, which will be your ring finger here on the fifth fret. And it's the same basic pattern. So anywhere that you're on the fretboard, you'll move three frets up on the E, then two frets up on the A, two frets up on D, two frets up on G, three frets up on B, and three frets up on E. And then just practice going up and down that scale in different positions. talk about moving the position so that it changes keys, that means you'll be able to play in different key signatures depending on whatever song you're in. And the important thing to know is the major and minor pentatonic scale is the same thing, it's the same basic pattern, but it'll be rooted differently. So that open position here... That would be a minor pentatonic if you're playing an E. But if you were in G, 
like so. It would be a major pentatonic. All you have to know is that in the pattern that I showed you, on the low note, the lowest note in that shape will be the minor, and the note just three up from the lowest is the major. So if you wanted to play in G minor, you'd go to the third fret here, and this note is a G. And just play that same pattern. And then if you went three frets up and based everything around this note, you'd have the major pentatonic. So when you're playing in G like this, you can just play with the notes. And you'll be playing with the major pentatonic. Okay, and to conceptualize the pentatonic scale that we've just gone over, I'll go ahead and show you how it's used in a Pink Floyd song called Wish You Were Here. And like I said, if you do the open pentatonic scale while you're in G, you have the G major pentatonic, which is what scale is used in this song, which sounds like this. So it's very simple. He's just going through the notes that are in the pentatonic scale and just strumming on the G chord here. So if you take your G chord like this and then just move your first finger here up and down the pentatonic scale, the first note will be on the E string at the third fret, which is our G note. Then you'll do what's called a hammer on which means you'll take your finger and you'll hit the string down on the next fret. So you'll hit it open first, and then you'll hammer it to the second fret. Don't pick it with your picking hand. Just let the force of your finger let the note ring out. So then I'll go from the third fret on the E, open on the A, hammer to the second. Then go to the open D, and then we'll do another hammer. You'll pick it open, and then hammer it to the second fret again. And then just strum the chord. And then we'll move down from there. You'll hit the 2nd fret of the G string, or D string, and move to the open fret of the G string. Back to the 2nd fret of the D string, and open. So 2nd fret D, open G, 2nd fret of D, and then open up the D. Then we'll strum again. So to recap, we went. Then the next part of the song repeats that. And then the next two times around, it'll start the same, with the hammer to the second. 
but then instead of ending it like this, we'll end it a different way. So it'll be the second fret of the D string. Open D. Second fret of the A. Then the open A. Once again, second fret of the D. Open on the D. Second fret of the A. Open A. And then when we strum, we'll be doing a different chord where you'll bar at the um, second fret here and keep your ring finger and pinky finger at the third fret on the B and E string. So we'll recap that again. The second part starts the same with the third fret of the E. Open hammer on to the second from the A. Open hammer on to the second on the D. But then ends with the second D. Open D. Second on the A. And open A. And then with this barred A chord. So the whole sequence together will sound like this.